let's look at our complex numbers in a little bit more detail. We know that the i comes from square rooting a negative number, but what we want to deal with is a complex number, which is a real number plus an imaginary one. And we identify the imaginary one by the i, which is equal to the square root of negative 1. Well, when we do this, we always want to write it as a plus bi, where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part. And the i helps us keep them apart. So, how would I write 2 in standard form? Well, we recognize that 2 is purely real, so this becomes 2. And since there's no imaginary part, we could write this as 2 plus 0i. And we're okay writing this just as a 2, but to show it in complex form, it's 2 plus 0i. Similarly, if I have the square root of minus 36, first I reduce. Square root of minus 36 becomes 6i. The negative becomes the i. Square root of 36 is 6. And so in standard form, this is called standard form, a plus bi, we get 0 plus 6i. This is said to be purely real. This is said to be purely imaginary. But not all numbers do that. Sometimes we have a real number and an imaginary one. Well, the real number part's easy. The imaginary part, though, we have to simplify in this case. So this becomes 8i. Notice the minus just becomes the i. So this then becomes minus 3 minus 8i. And we are now done because we have our real part, minus 3, and our imaginary part, minus 8i. When answering problems, always answer in standard form. If it's purely real, it's okay to write just the 2. If it's purely imaginary, it's okay to write the 6i. If it has both a real part and an imaginary part, we always list the real number part first, the imaginary part second, and if they are in fraction forms, we always separate our fractions and reduce them separately.